will be criticizing me. Ours will be criticizing you. Ours will be harder on myself. You'll never know how I truly have felt. Makes you want to say this thing really does suck. Makes you want to say even things from the past. Makes you want to say this is the worst thing I have seen. Makes you want to say what the fuck, Murray? 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 Fuck, I just wanted to play Halo. <sighs> Look. I just wanted to play Halo. I complained, and now I'm paying for it. Onyx deleted my game. The only way he'll let me play is if I review Vanguard Zombies. That cocksucker. Anyway, let me remind you that Call of Duty Zombies has a long history. A legacy of music, easter eggs, easter egg quest lines, and memorable characters. You know, them seeing Nikolai, Takia, Rick, Toffin, and Samantha. Although, Cold War didn't have them playable except for Sam and Weaver. Uh, but at least they were playable. Cold War, although lacked playable story characters other than Sam and Weaver, they had cool perk machine designs, cool mechanics, and a super rewarding progression system in and outside the game. The Aether Crystals, the no perk limit, the armor system, the tier system for weapons, on top of that, a pack a punching system. You progressed to be powerful and it was still punishing when you were going down losing almost 4-6 to six perks at a time. It was crazy, I loved it. Die Machine, Firebase Z, Outbreak, and Mod Tone were all great maps and slash experiences. I didn't play Forsaken, I got a Series S and I own Cold War and Disc, so rip me. The only complaint with Cold War Zombies is the shotguns dominated the playing field. You had to run a shotgun and a wonder weapon and you had to train or camp. Tifu complained that they were just running in circles for hours on end, which is true. When you aren't training in the courtyard in Doris, you're camping on the catwalk. I mean, what else are you gonna do? The maps are not that big. Outbreak changed the playing field by placing big team battle maps as zombie maps with objectives. But they weren't round based. You did the objective and side things, then you moved on to a new map with a long ass loading screen. Anyway, Cold War introduced a lot of cool things. Let's see how they improved the gameplay. They didn't. I mean, as soon as you start the new map, Terra Medicta, or whatever the fuck it's called, the pack of punches right next to you, like, okay, no prerequisite to unlock it like in Cold War and any classic zombie maps. It's just there, along with the crafting table, which has not been changed too much. Killstreaks have been taken out, but that's okay. Killstreaks helped a little bit for players, and they may have not liked them. It was different, and it was kind of weird, but to remove them was a weird decision in itself. So you may be asking, what's more weird? Well, none of these. The covenants are more weird. Some perks have been taken out and made into covenants. You spend a heart that you earn from each round or objective that you do, more on that later, and you can buy up to three covenants. Also, not only some perks have been made into covenants, but alternate ammo types such as dead wire have been made into covenants. You no longer can just buy them from the pack-a-punch, returning acquiring ammo types back to RNG base, because you can only buy a random three at any point. The whole point of Cold War's Pack-A-Punch was to eliminate RNG. They did that too with the Wonderfish. Just go to the menu quickly and buy perks. Instead of waiting at the Wonderfish trying to get Jug and fucking knocked at their totem. Anyway, other than that, the box is here too. Cool. It doesn't move. Speaking of the box, it can spit out upgraded weapons, which the mystery box has never done vanilla. It does that because the rarity system is just how packed your gun is. So if it's a tier 3, it's legendary. Remember the armory? You can upgrade your weapon's rarity through that, but now it's just pack-a-punch that does it. It's okay, upgrading the rarity and packing the gun was tedious, 
But the thing about it is that you built your strength and that was satisfying. It was good. The armor is now at the crafting table and it's more expensive by around 500 salvage or so. Which is crazy. That's too much. It takes forever to get the first piece of armor. Like, it's baffling. Anyway, let's move on. Alright, let's look at the perks. They have Speed Cola, Jug, Stamina Up, Deadshot, and Quick Revive. Hmm. That's not a lot of perks. That's only six. Cold War by the time of it, the end of its lifespan had 11. Okay, it's weird that Deadshot and Vanguard doesn't lock on to the head. You have to get a Covenant for that. Okay, like Treyarch, come on. This is a missed opportunity. They use these altars of potions and change the names of the perk. Like, Ethereal Haste and Fiendish Fortitude. <laughs> like, really? Come on. They could have just used the classic perk machines. It's obvious they wanted to play off of nostalgia by adding Shuna Numa in the first map and adding an Eclipse like in Doris in the first map. Like, why did they not use the perk machines? This ties into Cold War story, so... How... When... What? What changed? What's the difference? I could understand the altar is like if Blizzard or 343 or Capcom or SR Us made the fucking zombies mode. But like this is Treyarch Zombies. Use the damn perk machines, you fox. Okay, how do you play the game? First off, it's not a round based game. You have to complete objectives to progress rounds like an outbreak. There is no wall buys, the mystery box doesn't move, there were no wonder weapons at launch, meaning no ray gun. You know, gaming's most iconic weapon almost? How do you not add the ray gun? Does Treyarch want a swirly or something? They got bullied enough and clowned on once we found out there were no pack-a-punch camos. Like, it's fucking ridiculous. Every time you complete a round, a part of the map opens up, so you don't have to buy doors or anything, you have to do objectives. These objectives are not fun either. They are like protecting the mushy bodies from zombies, or deposit the runes in the pillar, or stand in circles. Like, it's rarely just survive, and when it is, they give you no room to run around. It's stupid, and it's not fun. I just bought Black Ops 3 just to feel what peak zombies felt like, and it reminds me of the good times, before Treyarch tried to innovate for no reason. Don't get me wrong, I love Cold War, and Black Ops 4 wasn't absolutely terrible, but I didn't like it either. But Black Ops 3 has more maps than both of those, so... Plus the modding community and all that, it, so Black Ops 3 is just my pick, personally. What about the story? What can we pull from it? Well, before the events of Cold War and after the events of Black Ops 4, these demons got a hold of the Dark Aether's powers, and now the good demons are fighting the old demons for power. Like, okay, I have like no clue what's going on other than that. There's a dumpster size of dialogue on every fucking map that anyone could fucking care less about. Like I said, there's no perk machines, the demons give you these altars that you can buy several times to buff them over time. They also give you your artifacts which are your special abilities from Cold War. There are no new ones since Cold War's iteration. There is a spell book in the first map and it ties to the second map somehow but other than that the story is untangible. It's not interesting, no returning characters, no nothing. It's grade A perfect fucking bullshit. It's annoying. Let me let you in on something. The theory of why this is so bad is because Turk is too busy working on Zombie Chronicles 2. The whole community is talking about this theory and it's based on leaks. I take leaks with a grain of salt. History has shown that leaks are not always reliable and Treyarch has proven that they were themselves unreliable to give out a good, well-rounded experience for Vanguard. My expectations were this was going to be a better experience than Cold War, and I was wrong. So instead of playing the Lackloss of Zombies, let's play multiplayer. Yeah, that has to be good. Right? <laughs> multiplayer has to be good. Fuck! Ass! Damn it! Shit! Fuck! Oh my god. Why am I playing this? Fuck! 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 Oh, that's it!
Oh, you see it now. Your anger, your pain, your suffering. Where has led you? It only has led me to throw my controller and you ruining the satisfaction of it being destroyed into a million pieces. No, you see, there's a lot of pain in your heart. Do you find it familiar? I'm not doing your mind games right now. Leave me alone. This is the type of dismissive behavior that you've fallen out for years, forgetting the pain of others who caused you, and focusing the anger on these games, these sources of media. Have you learned anything from what you have done so far? I've learned to channel my anger through art. My complaints, they're valid, transformative. I put in the way others can share my pain. Exactly. You used to share your pain with someone special. Someone you used to care about. I know what you're doing. No, I don't care about the girl that you are talking about. Fuck off with that BS. You do care. Deep down, I know you do. We are the same. No, I moved on. You should too. Maybe she was never lost to the void. Maybe she left you because she needs some peace in her life. How dare you say that? You don't have the right to say what she decided to do. You don't know what happened between me and her. You have no clue what you're talking about. Exactly. Shut your mouth and 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 what? Review another shitty game? I'll be back right now. Next time, you'll be sorry, pussy. Goodbye.